In this video, I'm going to focus on self-winding clock company secondary clocks, more commonly referred to as slave clocks. The three smaller clocks above the self-winding clock company master clocks are self-winding clock company slave clocks. The master clock in the middle is controlling the slave clock. IBM and Standard Electric Time were known for their very reliable master clock slave clock systems. Unbeknownst to many, self-winding clock company also had a very reliable master clock slave clock system. As I'm telling this story, and if you find it interesting, please subscribe and check the bell. That will make these YouTube clock videos visible to more people. Thank you and now for the story. The hands of these slave clocks are advancing one half minute each 30 seconds. A slave clock is a clock that depends on another clock, a master clock, to operate. The hands will not move without an electrical signal from the master clock. In a recent video, I explained how the self-winding clock company subsidiary clocks are also connected to a master clock. But a subsidiary clock is not a slave clock. It has a complete clock movement and will run if disconnected from the master clock. That's not the case with a slave clock. A slave clock does not have a typical clock movement. They have a partial clock movement that can only move the hands. The hands only advance when receiving an electrical pulse from a master clock. If the connection to the master clock fails, the hands will not move. These three self-winding slave clocks receive a pulse from the master clock every 30 seconds, and the hands advance one half minute. One master clock slave clock system could include the master and one slave, or even hundreds of slaves. These are images of inside of each of the three slave clocks. The self-winding slave clock movements are very reliable, quite small, as you, and as you can see are protected from the elements by a cover. The self-winding slave clock movement was patented in 1909. There have only been two versions of the self-winding slave movement. And so for references, I've simply designated the early and the late versions. These are videos of the two versions. This is the early version. I have it repeatedly advancing just to show how the hands would be moved forward. Now the late version. The ratcheting mechanism on each of these is very simple and works great. Over the years I've collected self-winding slave clocks and have found several variations of both the early and the late movements. These five slave clock movements are all different. They could have any one of three different voltages and any one of three different numbers of pulses per minute. The difference in pulses needed to move the hands one minute is determined by the number of teeth on these two gears. This image highlights the two gears that determine the number of pulses. The gearing of this particular movement requires two pulses to move the hands one minute. This is an image of a slave movement that requires only one pulse to move the hands one minute. And the next image is of a slave movement that needs four pulses to move the hands one minute. The variable voltages also need clarification. Many early master clock slave clock systems of several companies connected the slave clocks in series. This is an early self-winding slave movement that was part of a series system. The resistors indicated and the movement will impulse on two or three volts DC. These are slave movements that operate on 12 and 24 volts DC. The resistance in ohms is stamped 300 and 700 on the movement plates. So three different numbers of pulses and three different voltages made it interesting. This was a true learning experience for me when I was installing this self-winding master clock slave clock display. 
And of course, nothing happens without a master clock that is configured to send the required pulses. The indicated master clock is the one I'm using. It's configured to send a pulse 24 volts DC every 30 seconds. So with this master clock slave clock system, the hands are advancing one half minute each 30 seconds. It all works perfectly as long as the master clock is functioning correctly and there are no interruption to wire connections between the masters and the slaves. I must say the self-winding clock company slave movements themselves are beautifully designed and work flawlessly. Self-winding clock company was well known for the synchronized Western Union and rental clocks and subsidiary clocks. I hope this video one can appreciate that the self-winding clock company also made a very reliable master clock, slave clock system. Thank you for watching. By subscribing and activating the bell, you'll be notified when I post a new video. Subscribing and also giving the video a thumbs up will help reach a wider audience of viewers. Hopefully people that may have no idea how fascinating these old electromechanical clocks and systems are and may find a new interest, possibly even becoming collectors. I have many other videos about self-winding clocks. Search under my name or under self-winding clocks. Thank you again.